Pfizer and BioNTech have bumped up their production target for the year to 2 billion shots. That's up 700 million doses from their previous goal. This coming as countries around the globe face mounting pressure to speed up vaccine rollout. Here to discuss is Bloomberg News senior medical reporter Michelle Cortez, who joins us live from Minneapolis. Michelle, great to see you this afternoon. Uh, places like Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles, as well as sports centers in the UK right now, are being turned into mass vaccination centers. Uh, is this what it's going to take to finally bump up the speed of rollout? It's a very risky proposition of what is happening now. What what many states and locations are doing is focusing more on quantity versus quality. So what we're going to be seeing is more people flooding the, the, the field, for example, trying to get access to these vaccines. And it hopes that vaccinating more Americans will lead us to herd immunity and better protection sooner. It is a risky proposition, though, because some of the most risky people, the, those who are most likely to contract and die from coronavirus, perhaps won't have access to the shots if they're going to be competing against, say, everyone age 65 and older in order to get exactly those vaccines. Michelle, we've had, you know, roughly a month at this point, roughly, since the first shot was, was given here in the U.S. Um, why is this still taking so long? Based on your reporting, what have been the hiccups and, and, and what does that say about how prepared we were for a mass mass inoculation? You have to remember that no one's ever done a mass inoculation like this before, certainly not in this period of time. And as you point out, it has been less than a month since we started the first round of these vaccinations. The other really critical thing to keep in mind is that I'm hearing that there was a huge focus, especially in the beginning, on the issue of distribution. And we knew things like keeping the Pfizer, Moderna, BioNTech vaccines at these incredibly low temperatures was going to be a problem. So we knew that cold chain was going to be a a problem and they really focused on that. And so we have seen success there. There has been the ability to get these vaccines out to the states. It is that last mile though, exactly as you point out, we have tens of millions of vaccines now distributed across the United States and only 8 million of them have actually found their way into people's arms. And of course that's gonna become more critical as these numbers increase because we're gonna have the first round of people needing their second doses, even as we have an increasing number of other Americans trying to get into their first round of doses. So it's going to be like waves of demand coming to these vaccination centers that are being set up across the country. And I think that the states just didn't really realize how complicated it was going to be and how much pressure there was. And of course, with the federal government focusing on developing and distributing those vaccines and not that last mile piece, that's where we're running into some of these difficulties. Is there anything that, that states can learn from other states that are doing this well? Is there anything that the United States can, can learn from Israel, which has so far uh, inoculated roughly 20% of its population? Well, I shouldn't say inoculated, I should say given, given the shot to 20% of its population. Is there any, are there any lessons to be learned right now? You know, in all honesty, there are probably lessons to be learned, but I think at this point, probably almost every state is drowning. No one is really looking to see what someone else has done in order to make their process more efficient. They're looking, they're waking up every morning, looking at their process and saying, how can we make this more efficient? And it's really interesting when you look at what the states are doing. Exactly, New York and California, they're opening these mass vaccination sites. They're opening it up. Some states are saying 65 and older, everyone in that age range can just sign up. Others are looking at 70 or 75 and older. The majority of states are sticking to the CDC's stair-step approach, where only medical professionals and nursing home residents are getting the vaccine at this point. And of course, in those states, it's moving much more slowly. So we're seeing this discrepancy of how it's rolling out across the country. About a month, you know, in, in a couple of months or a year from now, we'll be able to look back and say who did it right, who did it wrong. But without knowing exactly who is in the right and who is in the wrong, then we're going to have to wait for that that outcome. Yeah, there's going to be a, a serious uh, look back on the entire events of, of 2020 and, and 2021 when it comes to the pandemic and the way it was handled. Um, Bloomberg reporting this morning, Michelle, uh, that the federal government is suggesting that states use things like pizza and raffles as incentives to, to try to get medical staff to get vaccinated. We're seeing some alarming figures um, from medical staff and those frontline workers who are among the first in line to get the vaccine, not actually wanting the vaccine. Uh, based on your reporting, what do you think that people need to hear or need to see in order to be comfortable with getting the vaccine? 
Well, so it's it's such a great question, and it is a it's going to be a challenge for all of these areas that that, that roll out the vaccine. Honestly, what I think is going to happen is a fear of missing out. In some of these states that are rolling things out slowly and trying to make sure that the medical professionals have access to the vaccine, they're giving them the first shot. And as you point out, up to a third of them, and in some cases even more, are passing on it. They have to remember that there is a huge proportion of the United States that's desperate for this vaccine. And so what's happened is they have the first swing and they're probably, many of them are letting it go. So what's gonna happen is these floodgates are gonna open up and thousands and thousands and millions of people are going to start clamoring for those shots and they might have missed their chance. Now, it's because they're concerned, you know, appropriately concerned. Some people just want reassurance. The issue is, is that once that reassurance is there, then everyone's going to want it and you're going to be right in the pack with everyone else. So I do think that it's going to be this issue of having so much demand, knowing that your friends, your coworkers, other people have been vaccinated, nothing bad has happened to them, then people are gonna wanna get in line. But at that point, they're gonna have to be fighting with many millions of other people to get those same shots that they could have been first in line for initially. Michelle, given what we've seen over the last three, four weeks when it comes to the rollout of vaccine here in the United States and around the world, what is the uh, your re- reporting telling you about the timeline for when we will see our quote unquote herd immunity here in the US? Well, we are expecting to be able to vaccinate the entire country, or at least everybody who wants access to the vaccine sometime this summer and certainly by the end of the year. So at that point is when we should be seeing herd immunity, when we should be actually really dramatically slowing the spread of the virus throughout the country. Of course, there are issues with these new variants that we're seeing, and we know that mutation is happening. So there is risk to, to that being, you know, playing out. But certainly a year from now, there's no doubt that we're going to be in a very different situation than we are right now. I mean, I certainly hope so. Here we are uh, 11 days into 2021 and just hearing by the end of the year is, (laughs) is, I think, tough for a lot of people to swallow. Bloomberg senior medical reporter Michelle Cortez, live from Minneapolis. Michelle, thanks so much for, for taking the time. The biggest stories, the moment they happen from around the globe. Subscribe to Bloomberg Quick Take now for insight in an instant.